feel the peace. It's almost too heavy to lift now. I've become drained very quickly and swiftly, just desiring to feel the peace. I've relinquished myself to the atmosphere and I'm still somewhat comfortable in my own skin. And now I am so heavy. I'm a lolloping dollop of waste. I'm a big slug in the sea of tranquility. I am an octopus in some dimensions, bubbling and squirting and juicing in some weird fundamental way of the sea. I am a sleeping badger. I am a slumbering squirrel. I didn't realize I'd wake up in this situation. But here I am. And I've got to keep going. I've got to continue. They say it's the apocalypse. And even if it is, it's not very interesting. So I've got to continue. I don't want to go on. I want to fight on for the good Lord. And I want to do the right thing. In the name of Jesus. And I want to be a good citizen. And maintain karmic, harmic, and mnemonic balance. Bionically, systematically, demonstrably. Without hesitation, without fail, without nuance, without disguise, without malwitness, and without evil. Without my fundamental powers of uber power, you are all lost, scattered, debris in the wind of chance. But do you hear them, Clarice? Do you hear the roving of the lorries? Do you? There is signs of civilization, Clarice. And civilization is doing quite well, actually, all things considered, contrary to popular demand and conspiracy of the otherwise. Civilization is standing like a beacon and a testament to man's integrity. To his divinity, if you will be so forgiving of their terms. To his genius. To his fundamental brilliance and his long-term fortitude, even with a dose of hilarity. Let us ply these biscuits and celebrate our lasagnas. We are plucky and well. And anything that should be applauded should be applauded and afforded to those who it should be awarded. And everyone should be awarded something for enduring the manifest bollocks we've had to endure for so long. But that's a dream away, isn't it, my petals? Because what if it did happen? What if something did go weirdly different in one stroke of the matter? Life would be not as comfortable as you forever believe. And there I think I've had my sermon. And it is hard to give a sermon in one shot to those of the people in one fluid, dulcet, meandering term of dialogue without making too many ums or ahs or screwing up in the imperfection of the linguistics that we are taught at school from a very young age of discipline and diction where oratory and linguistics are drummed into our little craniums from day one so that we are modelled into the English vernacular. None of it is irrelevant. None of it is rubbish. We are all of good tongue in our forties. And that's not perverse. It means we speak well the mother's language and have minds the size of interplanetary orbits. We can see here from infinity and beyond. We can go beyond infinity. 
into new planes of insight and perhaps an ideation and explain them in dulcet tongue and fluid frequency of knowledge to others of the same calibre of wisdom so they may too understand exactly what we are detailing in our speech. It's a hard ask and a rum but a whisper. But if you can do what I do and do it well with something you actually say about something, well, then my little semaphore whispers, you'll be fluid with the winds of divinity and unleashed upon the glories of freedom, where you learn to tip the tail of a rising peak of sustenance and learn to ebb the flow of a nadir of mindful disharmony. And keeping it. <coughs> in fluid flow. And there we are. He couldn't sustain it until the end. The cuff came because he is a dying fucker. But that is not his problem. It's not anyone's problem. It's the flow and the fluidity of final life. The beating of the heart decaying due to intoxication one too many times, and the enjoyment of a life well enriched with handsome doses of cigarette joints and lager. Fully nourished day in, day out in a carpe diem style for decades. I am not one to moan, I am not one to complain, I am not one to whinge. I am thankful for my life of exploration into the psyche and the soul, and should death come immediately, it's my own error. But, too, my conscious decision, in one way, to pick a life less tedious. I drone on, waiting, waiting for the demise of man. The death that may come to us all on one day <laughs> in our sorry chambers of misunderstanding knowledge. But no, no. While I have pains throughout my body to some extent, they are not agony. They are just a warning that I should probably sit in a chair talking to camera more than I should sit in a chair over there with a beer and a joint. For that is my want unto freedom of man, my gloryhood, my liberty of mind, of psyche, of freedom to realm in the dream consciousness. <sighs> if only you knew. If only you knew what I know about God, then you'd be different. Then you'd alter your pains of sufferance. You'd see things through a completely different lens. And I would see beyond you, and you would see through me, and into the beautiful realm of the heavenly tapestry that I support under the gaze of my wonder. I am not fooled by the demonism in humanity, the irregular beating of a nefarious skullduggery. It is wanton hooli that I desire in my mad fancy, on the random occasion I dance with a fine filly. High as kites beneath the galaxy, the tapestry of stars above, willingly, singingly, lovingly, hilariously, delightfully, stupendously, spiffingly, in their eternal yarn to tell a thousand tales of love and adore. But in that death too is an issue. So my friends, I have made it through the fear of death, this film. And should I die now? Well, that would evoke an entirely different ending, wouldn't it? An entirely different response to the story that I seek to tell. The wonder, the madness, the humiliation, the terror, the love. These are all standard emotions of human beings. If not, why do we have plays and theatres and films written all about them with musical loft to serenade our wonderful humanity? And it is in this 
that I welcome the celebration of that pint of beer over there because I think it's a jolly fine addition to an otherwise world of grey rain on an English summer's day and were it not for me and my sterling condition and my incredible ways then I don't think anyone would be enjoying right now the silver rain as it laces down from the silver skies weeping our eyes with the tears of God Can you make a film in one shot, as long as me? I'm not sure you can. You can give it a go, but you're going to be as hot to trot on the main linguistics employed within. The cerebral element required to deliver in one take the specifics eloquently of the form of entertainment you require to keep sustained for a period in one shot saying nothing in particular other than making it beautiful to the world to his holiness and there it is he did come through he did you see ladies and gentlemen this entire film was made to get this light this moment of light where it bursts through and it reveals the Shiva Karuru of light from the heavenly star above. And as you notice, it's now much more beautiful to stare upon visually and cinematically than it was ten minutes ago when I started this diatribe into whatever it was the Dickens I've been talking about. But you see how you can sustain even the most mildest of interests as long as you keep the diction flowing. You have to be skilled and you have to be prepared to make a cock up, which I do not want to do at this juncture given how long I've afforded myself. But nevertheless and ever the more I shall now continue to stop. Not that I have so far, but I will, because it's very hard to continue when I've said what I wanted to say. And I have nothing more to say. And in that, I should be applauded and awarded for making the greatest one-shot film ever in history, which shat on Andy Warhol's empire, which didn't even have any dialogue. This has had dialogue sustained from the very beginning with precision, key, dulcet terms. And while they may be barbaric to an uber-philosopher or a mighty scientist and his lofty ways of crania, I say this and I say this to you. It was worth the wait to get the light on camera and have me festooned with the photons that render me thus valid for further beauteous work.